afternoon. Thank you for joining the Chai Academy and welcome to the Chai Center. I am Rabbi Sachs and I am honored to be with you today. So uh, we are in the middle of a uh, course. Once again, each class is, is self-contained. And um, we were discussing yesterday that there's a, a Mishnah and the Mishnah talks about there are there are certain things one does, certain mitzvahs, certain good deeds that one does that, um, that one gains reward in this world and the next world. And uh, once again, the mission is not a uh, Kabbalistic, it's not a, uh, so it's just fascinating to me that it talks about rewards of mitzvahs, etc. So um, yesterday we spoke about the um, having guests and we, it was a long discussion about um, what that means, entertaining guests, helping guests, helping people, etc. And we also discussed the, the, the helping a bride, bride and groom get married and, and uh, good afternoon, Eileen. And um, the, the, the ramifications and, and uh, how important it, it is on the totem pole of, of um, Jewish ethics that, that um, it comes before most things. Marrying off a bride and groom who cannot afford a, a, a decent m m wedding um, comes before a synagogue building, it comes before a Torah, purchasing a Torah scroll, etc. And, um, and once again, how we, we, we discuss how the, the uh, Jewish world really appreciates this mitzvah and they, there are so many resources now for a bride and groom. I'll tell you something fascinating just before we can go on to our discussion. There are communities that have wedding packages, affordable wedding packages. And basically, um, you can choose packet A, B, or C. Packet A is for 125 guests, or packet B, whatever, and, and, it's, and it's cheap. You know, for $6,000, you can have 50 people, including the musician, including this. They, they, it's an organization that puts it together, so this way, the stress is minimized. And, um, you know, and then, you, you know, you have a larger guest, but uh, and, and at a certain point, I believe they say you can't have more than, you know, 200 guests or whatever. You just cannot have because it is no mitzvah to get in debt while you marry off your kids. So um, that's just something that I, I remembered. Today, we're going to talk about another thing the Mishnah speaks about, where, where one... Um, gets reward in this world and in the next world. And that is called halvoas, halvoyas hamis, which means escorting the dead. Escorting the dead is essentially, you see most funerals where, where people, there's a processional, the cars follow behind, and it's true, <laughs> It's true of Jewish funerals, non-Jewish funerals, but, but it, it actually started with Jewish funerals that part of the mitzvah is to escort a loved one to their final resting place. And um, the term, in fact, the Hebrew term for funeral is called levaya, which means a company. So it, it is, it is a, a mitzvah, a mitzvah, we're talking about a, a, a Jewish law that we need to escort. Now, there's more things than just escort, but let's talk about escort. It's because that's the obligation on everybody. The obligation, according to Jewish law, is if you see a funeral, you're outside, and if you see a funeral, you need to stand and look and walk a few steps. And obviously, if you're part of the funeral procession, you're gonna do more than that. Um, so so the, way, the way it works in many, many Jewish circles is that the, 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 the hearse from, on, from the funeral home and to, on the way to the cemetery, they stop at the 
synagogue that the person was involved in. It's a custom of many, many. And when they, when they stop at the synagogue, they stop. People gather and they walk behind for 30, 40, 50 feet. Then they close and with the, with the door open, the hearse open, the, her, the back door open. Then they close it and then people get in their cars and continue on their way to the cemetery. So this is a, an important mitzvah. And, and I know in Brooklyn, in Crown Heights, where I used to live, is that the, when, when they announce that there's going to be a hearse passing by the main synagogue at one o'clock, at one o'clock, the store owners lock their door and they come out and or they get a call saying, okay, it's running late, you know, two minutes, it will be here in five minutes, 15 minutes, one minute. And for those couple of minutes, they, they walk to the, the synagogue and they, and they walk behind the casket. It's immaterial if they knew the person or not. It's part of the mitzvah is to show respect, is to show respect for a person. This person lived in this world, a soul came down in the person's body and the, the person, you know, it was wear and tear and war and tour and to show respect for this person that lived, whether you knew them or not, you walked behind the casket and, and you, um, as a sign of respect, just, just, um, just incredible. And you're taught that you stop if you're studying in the yeshiva then, except young kids, but if you're studying yeshiva, then you stop learning. You go out for those couple of minutes, do your thing. Young kids do not go out because <laughs> it's brought down in the, in the Talmud that young children do not stop studying even to build the holy temple in Jerusalem when it will be rebuilt. The local yeshivas do not stop. So they continue. So they do not, they're, they're free, they're exempt from, from stopping their studies and walking behind the casket. There is no maximum. There is no, uh, there, there is no maximum. You can have 6,000 people, you can have 600,000 people. The Talmud mentions 600,000 people. So there's no maximum. The minimum, there is a minimum. There should be at least a minion. At least 10 people walking behind. But, um, but, but, but the idea is that, you know, whether you knew the person or not, you, and just as we discussed yesterday with a wedding, that they call people if it's a small wedding, they will also call people to say, you know what? There's, there's nobody showing up, there's no family, there's, please come, come, and if you can come to the grave to help bury, that would be great also. This is a mitzvah where you get reward in this world, and you get reward also in the next world. Um, the, the, yes, women walk too, absolutely, absolutely. Women, women walk as well, of course. Um, now, the, 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 there is, there is, as far as a person that has no relatives, so that is called a mess mitzvah, which means a mitzvah, you actually get, there's nobody else, so you have to step up. And that is considered such a lofty mitzvah that biblically, even a priest, a kohen, now, a Kohen, somebody from the Kohanic tribe, even today, is allowed to go to the funeral of their mother, father, and others help with the funeral, touch the casket, if you will. Mother, father, brother, sister, son, daughter, spouse. That's it. They can't touch the casket of a friend. They're not allowed to. They are allowed to if this is a mess mitzvah. The person had no family then even the Kohen, even the high priest, that's how much of a, that's how great of a mitzvah it is to get involved. Um, I've been involved in a few mess mitzvahs where I get called to say this person had no relatives, we're looking for somebody to say prayers at the grave, and, and uh, it's usually the funeral home that calls me, and I go, 
I go and I'm there, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a representative. And, and, and that's considered a mess mitzvah. And I throw in as many shabbafuls as I can throw in. If I can persuade somebody, somebody or somebodies to come with me, and we can throw more shabbaful up there, then that is, um, that's what I'll do as well. But if not, I'm definitely there. And it's not, it's not a, a, you know, it's, it's nobody, there's nobody to pay you. Sometimes I have to convince the, um, sometimes I have to convince the funeral home to, to do this pro bono because there is nobody. It just landed on my, it landed on my plate. You know, my, my, um, I have a, I have a brother who lives out of town. He called me once to say that there is this, um, person who passed in a nursing home has no family. Um, he needs help, so I, I I helped him call the 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 uh, a funeral home that was sensitive, and they got this person out of the mortuary and buried in a Jewish potter's field. So that is considered a mess mitzvah. Now, if there are family members, if there are you know people have you know, stepped up to the plate, then your obligation is only to walk behind. Close your store, shut your book, stop your studies, um, you know, you'll come back to your lunch and you'll walk behind the casket. But if there is nobody else who's willing to accept assignment to bury the individual, then it's not just simply walking behind. Then. You, your job is to prepare the body, get the grave, the free one, donated one, um, and and um, uh, there was one point I had very inexpensive graves, which was which worked. I used to, um, I don't have that luxury anymore, um, and 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 and, um, and and get the person buried from you know from A to Z. And, and, and you'll be surprised how many, how many people are stuck. They just don't know where to turn. So that's part and parcel of my job is, is that, uh, you know, I guide people how to bury their loved one. That is a mitzvah. That is a mitzvah. So uh, it, it, it's, you know, I'll, I'll, even, I'll even tell you something. It's interesting. So my father was in a nursing home in Williamsburg, in Brooklyn. But my father lived his whole life in Crown Heights of Brooklyn. When my father passed, I called the Crown Heights Burial Society. And they told me, we have enough on our plate with Crown Heights. Your father lived in Williamsburg. I said, no, no. My father was in a nursing home in Williamsburg. He didn't live in Williamsburg. Because they said go to the go to the Williamsburg. I said no, absolutely not. He lived his whole life in Crown Heights, and he's being buried in the Crown Heights section. I need you guys to get involved. So they said they're not top priority. And I said, which was a wrong comment, but I said to myself, this is insane. So I called an individual who I know is involved with the burial society, an you know, old volunteer, and I said this was their answer. He goes, say no more. I'm on it. This individual, as an individual, got my father into whatever needed to be done with as far as, as, as getting my father buried. So he was sort of in no man's land because he, he died while living in Williamsburg and, and there's different customs, etc. And you know, you want people you know, you don't have to have people you know, but you want, it's, it's more of a feeling type of thing. So this individual stepped up to the plate as a mitzvah. He wasn't called by the burial society to say, you're, you know, oh, you're on call, you need to do this. He did it as a favor to me. And um, that's called a mess mitzvah. Part of burying the dead is as follows. Part of burying the dead is is to to make sure that there's a funeral home a funeral director at least making sure that there's a casket making sure that there's shrouds making sure there's a spot making sure that that um 
that that there's there's a, a uh, grave you know the grave diggers have been consulted this is all part of the mitzvah of getting it done um so funeral directors you know you go to star david you go to others um they they you know this is what they do for a living but we're talking about part and parcel of the mitzvah is to make sure this is done and then of course the actual burial natural burial so the Hebrew Kedisha, the, the, the Holy Burial Society, which is all, once again all volunteer, so they, they, they make sure that this is all done, and they also, they're there to help bury, to physically lower the casket. Physically lower the casket. And, and, um, and, 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 and they do it. Now, when, when, you know, if, if they if the burial society is not there, and you know they don't, and then ideally the, the the casket should be lowered by people that knew the person, and not by the professionals who are in the cemetery. I mean, burial is burial. So, um, so, so, but part of what the Hever Kedisha has, and part of the mitzvah, is actually to lower, to lower the casket, take the the belts and suspenders and lower the casket. Um, so let's go back. We go back to following in the car. There's also following when you actually get into the cemetery. You walk behind. You walk behind. Many people they run to the to the to the where the grave is. That's wrong. The mitzvah is to walk behind. And in fact, it's clear from the code of Jewish law that you don't walk in front. Nobody walks in front of this casket. You don't want to appear overly eager. Um, you walk at the sides, you walk behind. The people that are carrying or rolling the casket, they walk on the side. And there's one person perhaps walking in front directing, but that's it. Everybody else walks behind. That's part and parcel of the mitzvah. And um, I'll tell you something in, in, in Yerushalayim, in, in Jerusalem, there is a Jerusalem custom for Jerusalemites is that family don't even attend at the burial. You know, we speak about waiting for family. In Jerusalem, if you're a Jerusalemite, if you're coming from out of town, you don't have that custom. But for Jerusalemites, they, they actually bury, and they prefer, um, they prefer that the family's not there, because that's the custom. That the, the, the descendants, not family, descendants specifically, do not come to the grave in Jerusalem if you're a Jerusalemite born and bred in Jerusalem otherwise we do so our custom is we do that we wait for the family and and we wait for the family to, to, to come and the family can participate in the burial men women etc um, some people have the custom that everybody participates in the burial except for the, the, the direct children do not various different customs but but being at the burial is also part of the mitzvah. So you walk behind, you help with the shovel, then after the burial, you're there. Um, should the family be the first ones behind the body? Not necessarily. No, not necessarily. You know, it's kind of menschlichkeit. We kind of gravitate towards that, but no, nowhere is it written that the family have to be the first ones behind. Um, and so, so if you if you attend a funeral and you get the mitzvah, so your, your your job is to walk behind. Your job is to help bury, help lower, help bury, and fill the cavity. And then your job is to stand in line and escort the mourners out of the cemetery. So essentially, when this is all part of the mitzvah. When the burial is over, you form two parallel lines, men on one side, women on the other, and the children walk through and you bless them. That's part and parcel of the mitzvah. You actually bless them. You bless them with long life and they should be comforted 
and um, and and then they walk out to the cemetery and then the responsibility is over when you're a person that is in line that 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 um, that is comforting the mourner after the cemetery you are free from every other obligation you don't have to daven you don't have to study you don't have to pray you don't have to do this your job is is get the family from the burial place out to their car essentially it's part of the mitzvah so you're there in the beginning and you're there at the end um and um so there's many components to this mitzvah there's just simply to walk behind the car and then there's there's greater involvement where you actually show up at the cemetery and if you show up at the cemetery you you do what you 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 need to be done if you have any questions you may feel free to contact me rabbi at the high center or um you you can make a comment here to see previous classes it's the forward slash academy God bless.